again, welcome. Thank you so much, Jeff. I have a few announcements this morning. The first is that we have a new president. Elect. <clears throat> Elect. Um, and a couple of UUAC related announcements. Um, so this year, the holiday wish list, the mitten tree, all of the things that we normally do in December are going to look different, obviously. Um, and we will be sharing some news soon about a lot of different holiday things, ways that you can um, support people and offer assistance to people in need, ways that worship will be uh, developing and um, we will be sharing that in a couple of weeks. So please stay tuned. There are still ways to get involved, still ways to help, and we need all of you to make those happen. Um, things that are happening closer, a little bit close sooner, um, the community care team, as we have mentioned, is making calls to all members of the congregation. So if you get a call from a member of the congregation, um, please pick up, say hello. They wanna know how you're doing. Uh, the ministers wanna know how you're doing. We wanna hear what's going on in your lives. We wanna hear um, how you're, you know, what, what uh, help we can be offering, how the church can be supporting you in this time. So um, connect with your community care team members uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, ribbons are still happening at church. You may have seen on our church Facebook page or our weekly announcements that there are uh, ribbons that we're tying to the railings and banisters in front of the church, um, offering up our collective prayers for the world in a physical and tangible way. Um, so it's a safe and socially distanced way that we can kind of collect our prayers together in a physical way. Um, I'm starting a covenant group, a three-week covenant group, Parenting as a Spiritual Practice. We have several people signed up um, and we could use a few more, so, uh, or we welcome more. We have plenty right now, but we welcome you if you would like to join with other parents to connect about what parenting is like in these times, how um, you are struggling, how you're finding joy, how you're staying grounded. Um, please email me and I will get you signed up uh, three weeks, the next three Tuesdays, the, the 10th, 17th, and 24th. Um, a couple of standard announcements. We're recording this, so um, everybody is muted and switch, go ahead and switch to gallery view if you um, want to see your fellow congregants. Grab a chalice. We'll be lighting our chalice together later in the service. Uh, please stay for coffee hour. It'll be about 20 minutes after the service and check your weekly email for other news and announcements. They come out now on Mondays and Thursdays or Fridays. So uh, if you're brand new with us, please fill out the visitor form that's in the chat box. And otherwise we're going to go into our small groups and greet one another. Um, we're gonna go, we're gonna try this new thing again where we break out into small groups and just have a few minutes to say hello to a couple of other people. So um, we'll see you back here in just a few moments. With our minds and our hearts and our hands, may we choose to bless the world. With our minds and our hearts and our hands, may we choose to bless the world. With our minds and our hearts and our hands, may we choose to bless the world. With our minds and our hearts and our hands, may we choose to bless the world. With our minds and our Good morning, everybody. We're gonna have our opening words and I will read the first part and Jeff Brown, our, our worship associate will respond. Please respond with him. Good 
These are from uh, my colleague, Reverend Teresa in Soto. Do not shut down the joy of this moment. Don't doubt it. Don't sober it. Add it, reinforce it. Build a wave of joy and unity that carries us forward. Work can be done joyfully. Hope is built joyfully. Futures are meant to be seen joyfully. Even as we roll up our sleeves. Our first hymn this morning will be Morning Has Come. You'll see the lyrics in the chat box and uh, they're easy ones. So you, can, you can sing loud and proud into your backyards, into your living rooms, on your porches, on your decks. Each week we have ha been having children and youth in our congregation light our chalice and share with us our covenant. This morning, Abby and Molly Bro will be lighting our chalice. We invite you to light one along with them at home and to join them in saying our covenant. And please, if you would like to be a chalice lighter with us this fall, um, there are some open dates coming up. So please sign up in the link in the chat box. Abby and Molly, thank you so much. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love, and to help one another.
Good morning, everybody. So I would like to invite any kids or people who would like to see what's in our wonder box to come closer to the screen or get in a good position in the room so you can see it. And this morning I have our wonder box. Inside I have a book. And this book is called Life. Pretty big title for a book. I wonder what it's going to tell us about. So this morning, this week, a lot of big things have changed in our country. And I've been thinking a lot about um, all of the changes that have happened, all of the changes that might happen in the future, all of the changes that need to happen, and how we keep going through um, long and hard times in our world. Um, it can be pretty exhausting to um, wonder when the coronavirus is going to and it can be pretty exhausting to wonder when justice is going to be, um, when our world is going to be a more fair and equal place. Um, and I just think this is a really good book to help us think about those questions. Okay, so it's called Life and it's by Cynthia Ryland and Brendan Wenzel made the pictures. And I'm gonna hold it right up close for you all. This is on the inside. There is so much to love about life. Life begins small. Even for the elephants, then it grows. Beneath the sun and the moon, life grows. Ask any animal on earth, what do you love about life? The hawk will say sky. The camel will say sand. The snake will say grass. Turtle may remain quiet. It has seen much in its hundred years. But the turtle loves life. How could it not with so much rain on its back? Life is not always easy. There will probably be a stretch of wilderness now and then. wilderness eventually ends. And there is always a new road to take. Remember this, in every corner of the world, there is something to love. and something to protect. And if one day, it seems nothing beautiful will ever come your way again. Trust the rabbit in the field and the deer who crosses your path. Trust the wolf and the wild geese who find their way back home. All these know something about life, that everything is changing. And it is worth waking up in the morning to see what will happen. Because life begins small. and grows. And 
that's the end. Thank you everybody so much. I'm really looking to fo forward to seeing how we grow from here, how we grow from this place where we are today, all of us individually and our country. And I uh, look forward to sharing that with all of you. Thanks, Heather. Friends, as we hold these words that we've heard, the wisdom, the stories, and we let them settle into our minds and hearts, I welcome you into a time of prayer and meditation and quiet. Take this moment to breathe. Relax your hands, close your eyes, release the weight you have been carrying. Put it down now, at least for a moment. And join me in taking a deep breath in and letting it out. Please join in singing or listening or breathing into our uh, call to prayer, <laughs> just spirit of life and the words are in the chat box. Friends, on this momentous day, we begin our time of prayer with prayers of thanksgiving. What are those celebrations, those joys, and those things that bring you peace and allow you to see your connections to one another? What are those prayers this morning? Please place your prayers of thanksgiving in our chat box now for dancing in the streets. Yes, there is a lot of dancing in the streets today and yesterday. For the spirit of love, good friends through thick and thin, poll workers, mail carriers, yes, democracy. For all the horns, friends, nature, hope, for grandchildren, for the ability to work, Lots of prayers for hope and democracy, for another chance to become whom we are meant to be, for the call to unity, for Al Green's voice in our doxology, absolutely, for decency and integrity, for our country to heal, smiles and love, for new beginnings and acceptance of differences. For my children watching a Madam Vice President. And for every little girl who's watched the glass ceiling shatter. For the weather, for love, for light, for the end of chaos. For Nathan's new beard. Hmm. That women's voices can now be heard. Yes, the beard. Prayers for the beard for hope and love and for my family and community that we have leaders who care about my family and my children. 
for everyone who can go without feeling targeted. Friends, as these prayers continue to flow, I now offer you to invite the prayers that you are carrying for your loved ones. For those that you hold close, please offer those prayers in our chat box. For an end to the coronavirus that has affected so many, yes. For Sue, Merla, and Jerry, may they receive that which they need. For extended family members who are not happy with the election results. My nephew facing eviction, healing for ill friends. For my mom to be allowed outside for fresh air during quarantine. For my autistic grandson who's struggling with health issues, for all those with health issues, for all my friends who are feeling as terrified as others did four years ago, for all of you guys, thank you, Tenzin. Prayers for my sister, Beth, who begins radiation therapy tomorrow, for Julian in hospital after a minor heart attack, for his wife, Sarah, and his child, Ronan for neighbors who experienced a tragic fire yesterday, for Maria, for an uncle recovering from knee surgery and Diane who suffers from dementia, for those who are alone, for all of these prayers, please keep them coming. And finally, what are your prayers for our world this morning? How would you lift up all the beings in our interconnected web today. Please type those prayers in the chat box for women who continue to suffer around the world, for all who fear change, for unity and the beginnings of peaceful healing. Lots of prayers for healing this morning. For everyone who is in so, so in need of this change that it brings them what they need. Trust, truth, love, unity, and healing for a peaceful transition of power, for cooperation and progress. Please know that there is still hope and still love for all who suffer in violence, lack of food, clean water, poverty, and injustice, for those whose fear is expressed in violence and power mongering, for civil discourse in the public sphere, hope for peace in our country, for progress, not perfection, yes. Friends, for all of these and those that still may remain unspoken on our hearts, will you please join me for a moment of prayer? God of many names, most of all, love. Our hearts are full this morning, full of the hope and promise of a new era in our country. Across the nation, there is music in the air and dancing in the streets. This morning, we pause to take the deep breaths that we have been holding these last few years. We give thanks for the opportunity to exhale we give thanks for the slender victory without which our democracy might have been destabilized once and for all. Bless this moment that we may build on the joy in it and bless this joy so that it may carry us forward into the work that we all now need to do. For our country remains divided. This election has not ended hatred and bigotry and violence. Help us to realize the strength we all carry to heal this nation of ours. Help us to look to each other for the resilience and support we need to carry us all forward. Help us to remember that we haven't given up on a more perfect union. Help us to hold in our sights the vision of a world of justice, peace, and love. And finally, Remind us that our faith calls us to create the world where all are welcome, 
where all are celebrated and where all are worthy of belonging. May it be so, amen. Let us now be still together. Many thanks once again for our beautiful music from Kathleen Castellanos. Uh, my wife, Karen, just texted me to say that's also the song for God Save the Queen. So she's uh, <laughs> singing that loud and proud as well. We have our reading, um, Choose to Bless the World by Rebecca Parker and two of our worship associates, Jen Ryan Brown and Jeff Brown, not related, will share. Your gifts whatever you discover them to be, can be used to bless or curse the world. The mind's power, the strength of the hands, the reaches of the heart, the gift of speaking, listening, imagining, seeing, waiting. Any of these can serve to feed the hungry, bind up old wounds, welcome the stranger, Praise what is sacred, do the work of justice, or offer love. Any of these can draw down the prison door, hoard bread, abandon the poor, obscure what is holy, comply with injustice, or withhold love. You must answer this question, what will you do with your gifts? Choose to bless the world. The choice to bless the world is more than an act of will, 
I'm moving forward into the world with the intention to do good. It is an act of recognition, a confession of surprise, a grateful acknowledgement that in the midst of a broken world, unspeakable beauty, grace, and mystery abide. There is an embrace of kindness that encompasses all life, even yours. And while there is injustice, anesthetization, excuse me, or evil, the moves, a holy disturbance, a benevolent rage, a revolutionary love, protesting, urging, insisting, that which is sacred will not be defiled. Those who bless the world live their life as a gesture of thanks for this beauty and this rage. The choice to bless the world can take you into solitude, to search for the sources of power and grace, native wisdom, healing, and liberation. More, the choice will draw you into community, the endeavor shared, the heritage passed on, the companionship of struggle, the importance of keeping faith, the life of ritual and praise, the comfort of human friendship, the company of earth, the chorus of life welcoming you. None of us alone can save the world. Together, that is another possibility waiting. None of us alone can save the world. Together, that is another possibility waiting. Thank you, Jeff and Jen, for that reading. Our uh, offering this morning will be introduced by Dara Bryans. So sorry for that brief delay. I want to make sure I put the links in the chat box first. Um, so this morning, we are giving our, giving our offering to the um, Lower Ninth Ward Homeowners Association. And many of you know that we have been sending teams of people from our congregation down to New Orleans since shortly after the storm. And many of you are also probably wondering why it's been 15 years, why would we still be going? Um, and I have one word for you and that word is justice. Justice because um, Sorry, I made notes and I realized I can't look at my notes and look at the screen at the same time. So I'm gonna ad lib a little bit, so bear with me. So justice because after 14 years last fall when we went down, the house that you see right now is one that was stripped bare to the studs and not rebuilt since Katrina. Justice for them. Justice for a city that first allowed black people, freed black slaves and, slaves and freed black men to own property. Justice for the people left out of the programs designed to get people back into their homes, which didn't work for the poor and the disenfranchised in that city. Justice for the people that were three times victimized by the storm, by the bureaucracy, and by unscrupulous contractors. Many of you have heard over the years the stories of the families we worked for who were as much victimized by the help that they hired as they were by the storm itself. The Lower Ninth Ward Homeowners Association works to create justice for these families. They help with um, some of the programs that I mentioned that people were left out of or who now are caught in a trap that um, they're unable to finish their work and unable to get into their homes, but now need to repay. So the Lower Ninth Ward Homeowners Association helps get people back into their homes and stay in their homes. And if you are able, I encourage you to give generously. Thank you. Thank you, Dara. Um, the link is in the chat box. We are offering, uh, collecting our offering through Realm. So you just saw the slide with instructions and please click that link and don't forget to choose um, how to designate how much you would like to go towards your pledge and how much to our offering recipient. And thank you as always for your generosity.
Give us just one sec, friends, while we get the sound loaded. <clears throat> We rise, humbly heart and rise, won't be divided, rise, with spirit to guide us, rise, in hope, in prayer. We find ourselves here in hope, in prayer. We're right here in hope, in prayer. We find ourselves here in hope, in prayer. We're right here. We Friends, if we were in church, we would be all rising to our feet and to give choir and our singers a huge round of applause. So let us do that in spirit um, or wave into your screens and Sarah and everyone who sang, just please soak it up because Sarah and everybody who worked on that worked so hard to get that to happen in time for this morning. And special thanks also to Heather Kincannon who found that song and said, hey, let's try to do this on Tuesday afternoon. So friends, here's our world. Terrible things happen, but beautiful things happen too. Let's be not afraid. Let's keep our hearts tender and our eyes soft because this is what you and I are about. We know there is no answer but to love each other. That's especially true now. We bear witness against unnecessary destruction and then we gather in community to practice being the person we say we want to be. We cannot do everything, but we can do something, and that something is never nothing. So as Leonard Cohen reminds us, ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. 
there is a crack in everything and say with me, if you know the words, that is how the light gets in. So holy cow, what a week. <laughs> we have been holding our breath um, for four years. I have, let me speak for myself, I have. We've been clenching our fists this week, wondering what, what's gonna happen. We have been waking at night if you've slept at all. We have been hitting refresh on the news every few minutes. So Sarah already asked us earlier, but let me just ask us to just take a deep breath in and to like, just let it exhale. And let us, we've been clenching our fists maybe, and maybe we can just open them a little bit. Because today, after four years of tension in our country, four years of political leadership that's been bent on inflaming and exploiting our divisions. And I say that knowing that there are people in our community, both in church community and wider, who vote differently. Regardless, we as a country have taken a step toward healing, I believe. I was watching CNN the other night with Van Jones he was crying. He's a commentator. He's crying. He's a black man. He said, regardless, if you're Muslim today, you do not have a president who wants you to leave. If you're transgender, you don't have a president who wants to deny you your humanity. If you're a dreamer, you don't have a president who's leaving your future hanging in the balance. If you're black or brown, you don't have a president who more than nods towards white nationalism. If you as a, or a woman or identify as a woman, you don't have a president who is heard on tape bragging about sexual assault. And so we are divided, but today we do rise. We rise, humbly hearted, rise, won't be divided, rise, with spirit to guide us, rise. Thank you, Sarah. I think many of you would agree with me in saying that yesterday was a very good day. As the results of the election were finally called after many, many days of waiting, I feel as if I took a long, deep exhale for the first time in four years. Yesterday was a day that seemed to answer many of my fervent prayers and maybe yours too. It was a day that made me relieved. It was a day that made me cry more than once. A very, very good day. Our anthem this morning could not be more perfect because today it feels as though we are rising. We're rising against hatred and against bigotry. We're rising against chaos and fear. And we are rising to reclaim the country that we all love so much. But here's the thing, the refrain goes on and it says, we rise humbly hearted. And friends, while I am so, so happy about yesterday's very, very good day, I am also deeply humbled. I'm humbled because it seems nearly half of our country voted against everything I voted for. We are rising against hatred and bigotry. Well, it feels like the other half of this country was rising for it. I cannot understand how so many of us would want to continue to feed the divisions present in our country. And I say us deliberately because we are one country and one people. If we are to get anywhere, we must move away from the us versus them and towards we. I know how painful a proposition that is to hear, but it's true. This country belongs to all of us, even, even those who seem to stand 
for everything that we fight against. I'm humbled because I realize how deeply broken we are today. The current president did not break us. He is a glaring symptom of our break, of brokenness. We all know that, don't we? We can't blame all of this on him because he didn't cause it. He just exploited it mercilessly. The inequalities that exist in our nation today are staggering. Inequalities of wealth, healthcare, education, employment, the basic human rights of equal treatment under the law and protection from brutality and violence. The list goes on. Along with our political divisions, these divides are painful too. They are painful, especially for those on the margins, those who don't have the privileges that many of us enjoy. That kind of brokenness is more visible than ever and it brings me to my knees with sorrow. Most of all, I'm humbled to realize just how gripped by fear our country is today. Someone wise once said that everything we do is driven by love or fear. Those are the two base motivators for all of our thoughts, our decisions, and our actions. Well, I think it's pretty clear how much fear is calling the shots these days because I have never wit witnessed so much hatred in my life from all ends and sides of the spectrum. James Baldwin once said that, quote, one of the reasons people cling to their hates so stubbornly is because once hate is gone, they will be forced to deal with their pain. Friends, we are all in a lot of pain. Our country needs healing, and not just from the last four years, but from the last 400 years. The reckoning has started, but we have a long road to travel together. So I am humbled by all of these thoughts this morning. And I am grateful. I'm grateful that we have turned this corner. I'm grateful that I played my part in this turning and I'm grateful to walk this road with all of you, all of us humbly hearted. We rise humbly hearted rise won't be divided rise with spirit to guide us rise the second line that sarah has sung uh, three times now says rise we won't be divided and it is um it's such a it's such a tall ask i think right now we are um we're states divided we are counties divided between urban and rural we are communities divided and also let's be real we are for some of us friendships divided and for some of us, myself included, we are families divided. Many of my families, you know, are still in Missouri. And I'm just wondering what it means to even heal, quote unquote, heal after all of this. I mean, what does it um, mean to quote unquote, come together? It sounds like such a platitude to me. We've learned, as Emily just said, that, you know, almost half of our fellow Americans and members of our communities and our family have voted in a way maybe differently than we have, right? And um, that means that they have, we have different worldviews. We have different um, news sources. <laughs> we have different realities. We have different facts. What does it even mean to come together? And I'm especially wondering what it means um, for those in our communities, whether you're black or brown, or you're transgender, or you're an immigrant, like to, to ask someone who identifies as one of those folks, like my own sister, who's Vietnamese, what does it even mean to ask someone who's been particularly targeted by this last administration to quote unquote, come together? I mean, what does that even mean? This uh, fall, um, we were thinking, Karen and I, of an old friend of ours 
who, uh, when we first moved here to Massachusetts, um, so Ella was born like my first Sunday <laughs> and Emerson was three. We had our, so our kids were super little and we didn't really know anybody except for those of you in the church community. So Karen would go to a playground over in Medway. We lived in Medway um, like almost every day because I was at work so much. And I always go to the same swing set. And uh, she struck up a conversation and then a friendship with Judy who had kids the same ages. And Judy also lived in Medway. And they, the kids were tight. Um, Emerson and Ella sort of, you know, connected with them, the two kids, and, and we connected with Judy. And this family, this is a huge family, um, Massachusetts, like, you know, for a generation, welcomed us like their own. Every Christmas day, of course, I'm working Christmas Eve, every Christmas day, they would invite us to their home, this huge extended family, and just welcome us in every single year, year after year after year. I mean, they even watched Emerson Ellis, so Karen and I could go away for a weekend. And then this summer and into this fall, I mean, I'm not on Facebook that much, but Karen's like, you know, gosh, I just, I've been following Judy's Facebook page and like, they're just completely, you know, they're just big, big Trump supporters. And, you know, to, this may not be a surprise, Karen and I are not. <laughs> and we're like, what are we gonna do? Like, what are we gonna do with this relationship? And we're asking like, do we even do anything? Or do we just put like, are we done? This is the kind of wrestling that I'm feeling right now about how to, um, to engage these relationships with people I love that are close, that are proximate to me and to you, but also extending out. This is like exactly the practice that we're trying to figure out how to do. My therapist, who has helped me so much in my life, my adult life, said to me, gave me um, a reply that I, that is speaking to me at this moment. He said that the work of engaging relationships with people of difference is not about changing their mind. It's not about persuading them to come to, to your side. It's not about them, he said. And I was like, well, of course it's about them. <laughs> What are you talking about? Why do I even pay you? I mean, you should see their posts. It's not about them, Nathan, he said. It's about you. It's about me. Do I want to be the person who, um, needs to cut off a relationship that has meant a lot to me over the years because of their worldview is different than mine. Maybe, maybe that's true for you. Do, um, do you wanna have to be a person who puts a cone of, um, of avoidance around certain relationships? to not talk about politics or religion for that matter, to preserve the relationship because you know that it can't handle, that relationship can't handle hard conversations? Maybe, not all relationships can. Are you a person in a marginalized uh, you know, community who we've talked about before, who simply cannot engage with a person who, who voted in a different way Maybe that's true for you. And I think that that needs to be okay. But I guess I just keep coming back to the place that I'm in right now, which is I'm thinking about Judy and I'm wondering what other choice do I have? What other choice do I have other than I can continue to ice her out or I can ask if she's willing to have a hard conversation with me. That song, Rise, We Won't Be Divided, means that I need to rise, I think, to that moment. 
And my request to you, to us, is to consider what rising to that moment is going to look like in your life. Sarah. We rise, humbly hearted, rise, won't be divided, rise, with spirit to guide us, rise. Rise with spirit to guide us. My friends, I wonder what the spirit is calling me to do in this moment, what it is calling you to do in this moment, what love is calling me toward. Friends, I believe that the work that love is calling us towards in this moment is what love has always called us to do. It calls us to respect and defend human life, all human life, to fight for the rights of the most mar marginalized people in our communities, to amplify the voices and the demands of people of color, of poor folks, of trans folks, of women, Love is calling us and has always called us to stay rooted in our values, to work to build a world rooted in justice and fairness and equity, to resist the politics of supremacy systems, to not let the winds of fear or anger or division push us off our moral center. And even as the context around us changes, the call of the spirit of love has stayed steady. Everett Thompson, who is the campaign manager for Side with Love, which is our Unitarian Universalist justice making branch, pointed me towards some research recently in a talk that he gave that shows that if you do something 300 times, it becomes habit, it becomes effortless. If you do something 3000 times, it becomes muscle memory, it becomes part of who we are. Choose love, he said, choose love, then choose it again and choose it again, and choose love again and again and again until it becomes a habit. And then choose it again and again and again and again and again and again and again until it becomes muscle memory, until choosing love becomes part of who we are. Because choosing love is a choice. There is always a choice between being led by love and being led by fear choose love. And beloved, to choose love means that we need to be able to hear the spirit guiding us. We need to be able to return to the practices that sustain us and center us, the ones that ground us and help us to hear that still small voice inside of us urging us to choose love. So breathe, breathe again. Exhale and let your shoulders drop. And then look up, look around. Don't get comfortable, get grounded. Friends, I must admit my relief is profound today and I am still listening for love for the spirit to guide us because there is so much work still ahead of us. There will be work to do once Biden is in the White House because while we have struck a mighty blow against fascism this week, I do not believe we have saved democracy, not yet. As has always been true, not everyone in our society has an equal voice or an equal opportunity. And for many of us, especially those of us with privileges that may have shielded us from some of these harsher truths of the workings of white supremacy, of patriarchy, of unjust and exploitative economic systems, of the intersections of these evils, the veil has been lifted for us in these last four years. And I really believe that that veil needed to be lifted, that the spirit lives behind the lifting of that veil that spirit that calls us towards a fuller humanity, that spirit that loves and defends human life and human thriving, that spirit that seeks a peace that is born not of unity, but of justice. Do not let this win mean that the veil comes down again. 
Keep choosing love. Keep lifting that veil. Choose love again and again and again. My friends, as we breathe deeply this weekend, may we get grounded but not comfortable. May we stay rooted in our values. May we let the spirit guide us. And may we choose love again and again and again and again until it becomes who we are. May it be so, and amen. Our closing hymn is We Would Be One. It's a classic and the lyrics are an important message for us today. The lyrics are in the chat box as always. And just remember, we can all see who's singing or not. <laughs> so that includes myself. So sing as you're able. So friends here at the end, I'm just gonna take a time and just to look at you, look at all of us together. I so wish we could be together today in person, to be together in this moment. So Dara, we would be one. Marty, we would be one. Judy and Earl, Susan Weaver, Alan, the Detweilers, the Paul family. Roger and Kay Payne. Roger was my supervisor back in the day. We would be one. Mike Zarin and the Marsh Keys and the LaFleur family and the Chamberlain family and Fran's iPad. We would be one. Deb Barnett and Janet Snyder and Janet Barnett and Mora and Donna and Ava and Deb and Barbie Breer and Alan Barbara. We would be one. We miss each other so much. Jamil, my friend, Jamil Adams. Your daughter in your lap, we would be one, my friend. Carly, Team Andrus, Carol and Don. Don, I'm trying to, I'm working on a beard to match yours, maybe. Joan Watts and Katie Fresnelli and Nancy and Catherine and Megan and Renee and Sarah and the Angel family and Doug Brown and Amy and Lois, Mary Kalo and Jenny Howland, Alicia the Lessica family, the Allenton family, Curtin family. We would be one, all of us, Carol, 
and all these iPads unnamed. Friends, we are together in this moment. I know it can be hard to feel that way, but we are together and so we say and we live out our call to ministry in these momentous and important times. So please say with me into your screens, we go forth into the world in peace to act with works of love and especially now in these times of division to affirm each person's dignity and to cherish the living earth. I hope you will stay for coffee hour. It's gonna happen right after the postlude and uh, just hang around and you can chat with some other people who would love to chat with you in a little bit. So good to see us.